Aviation accidents are still rare. But when pilots fly in and out of some airports around the world, they are putting their lives and those of their passengers at huge risk. Short runways, high altitudes, low visibility, and treacherous terrain are just some of the killer conditions that have led to tragic consequences. These are the world's 10 most extreme airports. Off from just one runway. At the tip of Southern California lies the 10th most extreme airport. San Diego's Lindbergh Field. The challenge is more the surrounding community. In the 80 years since the airport was built, San Diego has literally grown up around it, and now pilots have to navigate dozens of buildings as they pass over the city. The dramatic part of San Diego is the parking garage. The parking garage on the approach into San Diego is one of those obstructions that most people would not normally associate with an airport. If you were going to build a building, the last place around an airport you would think of doing it is in front of the runway. Number nine on the list of the world's most extreme airports is on the beautiful island of Madeira. Funchal Airport is extreme because of its location. The runway has been carved out of the side of the mountain and extends into the ocean. Because the airport is between the mountains and the sea, it is exposed to unpredictable wind patterns. Madeira has canyon winds that blow from both ends of the runway, but in different directions. Eagle Vale is number eight on the list. When it comes to flying in mountainous areas, this is one of the most dangerous. It serves the ski resort of Vale in the Rocky Mountains of Central America. The higher you get in the atmosphere, the thinner the air, it's less dense. And those air molecules are what an aircraft uses to create lift over a wing, and then the engines also use that to create the thrust or energy to move the aircraft around. To make up for the lack of horsepower, pilots have to increase their speed, and that causes problems at Eagle Vale. If you're going faster over the ground, that means you cover more runway when you land. And on a departure, the airplane requires more runway for takeoff and requires actually more ground speed so that's one of the challenges that you face Cheval Airport flies in at number seven. It's situated high in the French Alps and has a perilously short roller coaster runway. The runway at Courchevel is a ski jump at one end and it's like a roller coaster at uh, Magic Mountain going along it. It's at 6,500 feet on the altitude. 1,700 feet is it for runway length.
Hong Kong's Kai Tak Airport checks in at number six on the list of the world's most extreme airports. But it had such a high rate of accidents that 12 years ago, it was closed down. Pilots still talk about the difficulties of navigating the runway. They thought, how are we going to help the pilots to do that, especially when the visibility is a little bit marginal? And they said, right, we're going to build a big aiming point where you have to begin your turn. So up on the mountainside, they built a huge flat space, actually aiming down the approach that the pilots would have to fly, and it was painted in red and white checks. Gibraltar, on the southern tip of Spain, is number five on the list of the world's most extreme airports. The Rock of Gibraltar guards the entrance to the Mediterranean Sea. And it's the location of Gibraltar that gives this airport its many dangers. Adverse weather causing severe crosswinds and high-rise buildings all present huge problems for pilots. Gibraltar is unique because it's a huge rock sitting on a small promontory at the end of Spain. But it's not owned by Spain, it's owned by Britain. It is a source of enormous irritation to Spain, but it is, of course, hugely important to Britain. Control of Gibraltar has been disputed for centuries. And until recently, Spain banned flights to Gibraltar from passing into its airspace. And there's traffic to navigate at Gibraltar, but not in the air. Perhaps the most unique feature is the fact it has a four-lane highway that goes right through the middle. Every time an aircraft comes in, they put the barriers down. So they stop traffic, and uh, the traffic backs up very quickly into the town area. St. Martin in the Caribbean is at number four. The island of St. Martin sits southeast of Miami and is served by the Princess Juliana Airport. In 1943, there was only one hotel on the island. Now there are nearly 3,000 rooms the runway. The approach puts the planes directly over the beach. St. Martin is an airport busy like all the other islands in the Caribbean. The beach is one of the busiest on the island. Probably the greatest airplane viewing spot in the world. Caribbean, St. Bart's is at number three. The holy French island of St. Bart's is just a few minutes' flight from the Caribbean hub of St. Martin. The sugar loaf turning down, final buzzer. The Goosey Galpa in the Central American country of Honduras is at number two. And Goosey Galpa's airport is Toncontin International. Its call sign is TNT. It is the approach and runway that combine to make the airport at Goosey Galpa so dangerous. 
Aircraft are forced to descend rapidly on approach because of the nearby terrain, only to meet the extremely short landing strip, which has a 65-foot cliff looming ominously at the end of it. No airport is more dangerous than the most extreme airport in the world. At number one is Nepal's Lukla Airport. It is located high in the northeastern corner of Nepal, in the heart of the Himalayas. Lukla Airport, Nepal, brings together all these variables we've been talking about, and it's really what makes an airport extreme. You have the altitude, mountains, wind shear, turbulence, a short runway. The approach into Lukla is treacherous because of the decrease in the horsepower of planes at such an altitude. As a result, once a landing attempt has begun, there is no going back. It requires a coordinated effort in the sky and on the ground. Everyone needs to be ready.